Hello, this video is walking through how to set up a flexible mega menu like this using Beaver Builder Saved Rows, the Beaver Builder short code, a free to use lightweight plugin from the repository and also a bit of custom CSS, which I'll include in my blog post, which will be linked to below this video. Before I move on, I should say that I've done a couple of videos on mega menus before because the Beaver Builder plugin and theme both have a mega menu and it's designed for text but as I've shown on an earlier video it can be extended upon with code so let me just show you this so this is what I did by adding in a snippet to your child themes functions PHP file it will allow you to be able to add to WordPress menu some HTML and even a short code there so that can be incorporated with the Beaver Builder mega menu you. And the plus side is that this is already set up in terms of CSS, so it will behave well responsively. You can also extend the CSS, as I found, with a little cheat, a pseudo class, which makes the menu appear full width here. And this is something I've not been able to do on the new menu. But of course, the new one is so much more flexible in terms of what you can do here as you saw there was some animation that went with that well that's been incorporated with the animation in the save row i've got some drop shadow again that's from the save row we can add what we like here we can have numerous different versions of that saved if we want to change out our mega menus our clients can go in and change this the downside is that you need to position things responsively with this version so everything moves over to the left here and you'll need to make sure that everything think is going to respond as you move your browser across but it's not that difficult there is one other consideration as well here this will work on your theme but in this case I'm using a replacement header so this is using the beaver builder menu module here and I think it's probably a lot easier in most cases because you will have to add some additional CSS to probably overwrite some of the themes CSS which has been applied to the menu there probably just a case of removing some padding or margin okay so let's move on first you'll need the free plugin from the repository which is this one short code in menus it's lightweight it seems to have been around for some time and get supported so I'm quite happy with that and you'll need to activate that then you'll need to go over and set up your save row so I've got this here in my template I would just mention why I've set this up the way I have. So if we go over here, notice that if you just save out your own row, it will be quite close to the links themselves. So it looks quite budged up. So I gave it a bit of space by mimicking the header above here with a bit of space here and then by putting this pointer, which I thought looked a little bit better. So let's just go into that. All I did here was to add in this column over the top here and in the column settings, I changed the background color to match the header. And in that, I also added the text editor and used this Unicode, which I've also added to the blog. Did the styling through here and then positioned everything using margins in the spacing for the text editor. Okay, and what we can do here is we can add menus within menus. You just can't add the same menu as you're using or I think the universe will implode. And finally, when you've got this set up, one other thing you might want to do, well, you'll probably need to do, unless you're really good with CSS, is to add in a custom selector. So go into the row settings and go down to I've used class, you could use ID and set in something like this. Okay, so once that's done, we are kind of ready to next add the ID of this template to our short code. Now we can use slugs or we can use the ID numbers and I prefer to use the ID numbers. So what we do is we'll go over to here. So we're stepping back into save rows and into editing those. And when we do that, we'll see we've got our ID here. So this number needs to be added to our short code. Now we can find this over at the short code reference on the Beaver Builder knowledge base and this is the one that I like to use. I've also included it in the blog post 
but just be aware that I needed to add this little asterisk else otherwise it would disappear so that needs to be removed and then you need to put the number in here and copy this whole thing to our place on our menu so let's go over to the menu so I've gone to appearance into menus and I've got that set up the plugins installed and it's added this you may wish to make sure that you've got description turned on so you can see the short code and possibly this as well which I'll explain in a moment the CSS class okay so what we first need to do is to have a menu that we can add the short code to as a child menu which is here so you just go in and you can doesn't matter what you call this because it's not going to be seen it's a child and then you add your short code into there so what I've done is I've created a custom link called mega menu that's what you can see on the actual menu I've made sure that that's not going to anywhere so I've put hashtag in there this is also where I've added in that CSS class which I'll talk about in a moment this isn't absolutely necessary okay and there we are there's doesn't matter what we call this and there's our short code so once we save the menu there and we've gone to the front end we'll be able to see our mega menu but without the CSS it's not going to look great it's all going to be bunched up it's going to actually take on the dimensions that are here I think it's got a, a minimum width here of some 200 and something pixels so everything is going to be bunched up until you add the CSS so let's go over to edit the CSS so I'm doing this from appearances theme editor and doing this into my styles.css file it's not so important where you do this and I brought in everything from my post so there's more CSS than you probably need here but the first thing that you need to do is to take the selector that I added to my row so this is the one that was added to the save row and then I need to give this a width now percentages won't work with this we need to give it some pixel width and the next bit here I've left it here it's not needed unless you need to move your menu itself so let's go over here I'm not going to show you this so when we move this over here it it moves to the left of this but imagine that you've added it over to this side you're probably going to want to move the whole menu a little bit to the right and then you'll need to adjust obviously this and the positioning of that so that's what that allows you to do if it's over here you probably won't need that let's go back so that's optional and the rest is all about setting our media queries so we've got different widths obviously as we move in and I'd best show you this we'll need to adjust for the different sizes that we've got the available size otherwise it's going to go off the screen so I've set a number of these and if I go let's go into this one uh, I've set this one I think to about 400 so it's included over here on that so that takes a little bit of adjusting but it's not you know it's not too difficult oh this may happen a little bit till you refresh it's not going to affect I don't think there's going to be many people adjusting their browsers all the time when they view this but that is a little bit of a quirk with it okay still doing it until I finally refresh let me just do a refresh but I mean anyone who's going to it at the correct width will only see that that's not a problem I don't think okay so let me move on to the last thing with the CSS and that is this bit so what I've done this is where I added in that extra bit of CSS into the parent menu on the WordPress menu and I gave it this as the selector name and what I'm doing here is I wanted to remove the default box shadow that applies to the all the menu items it's just included in the plugin in this case I also wanted to remove the background color because if I had a certain amount of animation you'll see some of the background showing through so I wanted to zero that out and also I wanted my own box shadow so I wanted to zero that out 
And I don't know if you can see that, but there is a little bit box shadow that goes with this, but I didn't want it to affect other menus there. So that was the last step. And I think that probably covers everything I need to tell you about this. I hope this was useful. And if you did like this video, as always, I'm going to ask you to please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. I hope you have a nice day and I hope to catch you in another video soon. Thanks very much. Bye bye.